Today, we're going to look at two pet images, and we want you to tell us what is the difference between image A and image B. How does pet work? What is attenuation correction, and how is it done? What is the magnitude of attenuation correction, and why is the skin quote-unquote hot? What are the three coincidences? What causes the poor resolution of PET and can that be helped? What additional shielding is needed for a PET scanner? How long do you normally wait after the injection of F18 before starting the PET scan? What is the typical dose to the patient? And what material are the detectors? So here on the left, we have a PET image that is attenuation corrected. So that's with AC. And then to the right, we have no attenuation correction. So you can see the difference between those. And I think it's important to continue to look at data sets, figures, and images, because you very well may get asked, just it may show a CT and they say, what is this of? What modality? Things of that nature. So be sure you know SPECT, PET, CT, all the different MRIs, ultrasound, and just all of the imaging modalities. So now how does PET work? So briefly, detectors are wired by coincidence circuits. So an event is only registered if a pulse in both detectors within a 10 or 20 nanosecond time period is shown. Now we gain projections that make a sinogram from these events, which can be filtered back projected to get an image. Now, if you use something like FDG, which is a positron emitter, you put that into a, into a patient and the positrons interact with electrons, which make these 511 kV photons emitted. And those are what are detected in these coincident circuits. CTs can help with differential attenuation along the path of annihilation, but certainly aren't always used. Uh, pet CTs are very nice to have, but pets also can work when you just fuse them with CTs in the clinic. So what is attenuation correction and how is it done? So measured signal has to be corrected for patient attenuation. So these are always greater than one, and it really depends on the radiologic distance of the body of the line of response. So for a 511 kV photon, which again, normally we use with FDG, the attenuation correction is approximately 20. And you can find this on NIST as well as other energy photons. So this depends on that half-life or the half-value layer rather of radiation. And you need a CT to determine the distance of the patient. So you can use a PET CT to attenuate or attenuation correct, or you can use another CT. Granted, you are probably going to get an error of around two or three millimeters if you use a different CT than a combined PET CT unit. So what is the magnitude of the attenuation correction and why is the skin hot? So I already kind of mentioned that normally for FDG, we're looking at 20. And again, that is because of the half value layer and the fact we're using 511 kV photons. So for the skin, the FDG tracer, now it goes all over into the body and skin attenuates very little because it's on the outside of the body and there isn't much attenuation. Skin doesn't attenuate it very much. And so you see a very high signal. That is why it shows up as quote unquote hot. So now what are the three coincidences? So we have true signal, which are counts from actual annihilation sites. We have scatter, which is scattered photons, and you could prevent this from using collimation. And then you have a random signal, which is simply noise from data sets and just from the data. So what causes the poor resolution and can it be helped? So the annihilation radiation made when you have your positron and your electron, that annihilation is really about one millimeter, that annihilation takes place one millimeter from the positron emission. And that typically is at 180 degrees plus or minus 0.25 
degrees. Now this, because it's not perfectly 180, that limits the resolution to about two millimeters. And because that is how annihilation works between a positron and electron that cannot be helped. And that is going to be the limit of our PET resolution. So now what additional shielding is needed? So if you think about cave or CTs, you're using very low level photons, but the PETs, as we mentioned with the annihilation, you are using a 0.511 MeV or 511 keV photons, which are higher than, you know, CT normally it differs, but normally you're talking about 140 keV photons. So CT shielding is approximately 1.6 millimeters of lead and PET CT, you are looking at, I'm going to say two to three millimeters. And again, these are ballpark numbers, but it's good to know one, it definitely is higher and to somewhat have a magnitude of what that is. And also I just noticed it's two or three CM, not millimeters, my apology. So CT shielding is 1.6 millimeters. PET CT is two or three centimeters. So that is significantly more than CT, and that is because, again, you have a higher energy. You can also refer to TG-108 if you want more information on that. So how long do you wait after the injection of F-18? And that is approximately one hour. So what dose to the patient when you do a PET examination? So you're looking at, for a, a PET exam, 10 to 20 millicuries, and that is going to equate to approximately 25 microsieverts per sim for the therapist. And a staff can do, if you look at this and their annual limit, they can do roughly 2,000 PET CTs before they hit their annual limit. So that's not going to happen. So it is uh, limited. That's how much you give patient. And that is how much normally a staff member would receive. And then finally, what type of material are the detectors? Typically, we have BGO or LSO. So I know we covered a lot, but PET and PET CT is important. Definitely brush up on these topics, dive deeper on your own time, expect a question similar to something to do with PET or peripheral imaging for treatments on your exam. If you have any questions, please comment below. I'll be happy to help and best of luck.